Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for Church Online. We are just so grateful that you decided to stop scrolling, stop doing whatever else that you could be doing, and tune in with us. This is week number three of a series that we've been in called Frequency, and we think that if you'll stick with us for the next 30 minutes or so, it can really add some value to your life. Maybe this is your first time here. Maybe a friend invited you to come. Maybe you just were scrolling along and you happened to see this. We want to let you know that we're honored that you're kicking the tires on this thing. And we think that if you'll, again, if you'll just stick with us for this next 30 minutes or so, we can add some life into your life. If you haven't already, why don't you take just a second, say hi to the people that are there with you in the chat room. Here's the great news that next week you will not have to say hi in the chat room. You're going to be able to be right here in the building and you're going to be able to wave at people and say hi to people face to face. It's going to be a great day. But I do want to let you know that if you're not from this immediate area, we know we got a lot of people from out of state and from out of the area tune in to Church Online. Church Online is not new for us. We've been doing it for years we're going to keep doing it. And so if it's possible for you to be here in the building next week, we would love to see you. But if that's not possible for you, tune in right here again at 1030, and we'll be having church online just like we always do. But like I said, we're in week number three of a series called Frequency, and we're trying to answer the question, how do I make sure that I'm hearing God's voice? If it's true, that God is speaking, and if it's true that God wants to give me wisdom and direction and guidance in my life, how do I make sure that I'm tuned in to that frequency? Jesus made it really, really clear that that's exactly what he wants for us. He said it this way. This has been our theme verse for this whole series. The gatekeeper opens up the gate for Jesus and the sheep. That's us. We listen to his voice. He is speaking. He calls his own sheep. He calls you by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them. So wherever you're going in life, Jesus is already there, and his sheep, we follow him. Why do we follow him? Because I know that voice. Oh, that, that's the voice of the good shepherd. That's the voice of the one that wants to get me to the best possible future for my life. I'm going to go in that direction, but Jesus makes it really clear his voice is not the only voice that's trying to get our attention. And we live in a culture that we've discovered that for our own selves. There's lots of different voices, lots of different invitations, lots of different opportunities. And so they will say, I'm never going to go back for me that one like Chris, uh, but they will never follow a stranger. I'm not going to follow that strange voice. In fact, I'm going to run away from him. Why? Well, I don't recognize that stranger's voice. That voice is trying to pull me over here. That voice is trying to get my attention. That's not a voice that I know. That's not the voice of God. And so I'm going to run away as fast as I can. And so in week number one, two weeks ago, we said how important it is that we make sure that our heart is prepared to hear from God, that God doesn't have a speaking problem. But so often in my life, I can have a hearing problem. I've got some things that get in the way of hearing God's voice. If you didn't get a chance to tune in, if you haven't watched that message, really want to encourage you. That is the launching off point for everything else we've talked about in this series. Go back to gatewayoakley.com and check on, you know, click on the little messages link. Watch that back. It, I promise, will really help you. And then last week we said, well, why? Why does God speak and what does he want to say to you? And we said that the most common way that God speaks is through that still, small voice, just that gentle whisper. And I think the reason that God often speaks in a whisper is in order for you to hear a whisper, you've got to be really close to that person. And God wants you to be close to him. God wants you to be connected to him. And we said that your heavenly father, he wants to speak encouragement. He wants to speak direction. He wants to give you warnings about things that you can't see. He wants to put dreams into your heart. And so today, as we finish up this series, we're going to ask the question, how do I make sure that I'm hearing the right voice? How do I recognize God's voice? When I get this sense or when I get this leading, when I feel like maybe this is God, how do I know? Is this God or is it my spiritual enemy, the devil? Because you know this, that the devil has a plan for your life as well. 
He wants to steal and to kill and to destroy. He wants to take you along a pathway that is not going to be good for you. God has a plan to give you a hope and a future to give you life and life in abundance. But how do I tell the difference between those two voices? Because maybe both of them feel and seem good right now. How do I make sure that it's not just my emotions talking? That it's not just I feel this way right now? How do I make sure it's not just the dinner that I ate or I'm not just tired? How do I know what God's voice really is? We're going to answer that question today. We're going to talk about four filters that we can all use. And then at the very end, I'm going to give you just three really simple tips. Four filters that you can filter every kind of sense that you have. Maybe if you feel that might have been God, four filters that you can use to make sure that it is. And then at the end, I want to give you three tips to make sure that you're hearing the voice of God. But the gospel writer, John, he makes it really clear that dear friends, do not believe every spirit. Don't believe every kind of feeling that you have. Don't believe every voice that you hear, but test them. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to give you some tests. We're going to give you some filters. Every spirit, every feeling, every leading that you have, how do I make sure that it's filtered? Because I want to know, is that from God or not? I want to follow the things that are from God. I want to run away from the things that aren't, because there's a lot of false prophets that have gone out into the world. Today, we're going to answer the question, how do I tell the difference? Because my feelings and what I feel right now in the moment, that might not be God for my future. That might just be I'm angry or I'm tired or I'm stressed or it might be my spiritual enemy trying to lead me into something dangerous. Proverbs said it really clearly. He says this, there is a way that appears right, like this feels right right now. This seems like the right way to go, but in the end, it can actually lead to death. Maybe some of you have experienced that, that you made a decision in the heat of the moment and it felt right. Sure, I should take that job. I should move to that city. I should buy that. I should take that second date. I should get into that relationship. It seemed so right in the moment, but down the road, you think, man, I wish I would have done something different. I wish I would have slowed down. I wish I would have gotten some advice. We all need a filter. I'm right there with you. I need a filter because there's lots of competing voices in our life. How do I make sure that what I'm sensing is actually God? How do I make sure that what I'm hearing is actually God? There's four filters here. The first one, when I get a feeling, when I get a sense, when I'm hearing a voice, the first question I've got to ask, this is the most important question, does it line up with the Bible? Because God's voice is never going to contradict with God's word. That God's written word is always going to line up with God's spoken voice. We are never, I'm right there with you, I'm never going to get a special revelation from God that is brand new, that nobody has ever heard before, that goes against something that the Bible has already said. That's not going to happen. Now, I might have a feeling, but if that feeling goes against what the Bible has already said, that is not from God. In other words, God's not going to tell you, hey, go ahead and leave your wife and go have an affair with the new young girl that started working in your office. That might feel like what you want to do. That might seem like that was the right way to go, but that is not the voice of God. It might seem right, but it will lead to death. It's going to come back to bite you. It always has to lead up, uh, line up rather, with the Bible. Jesus said it this way, and though all of heaven and earth are going to pass away, yet my words remain forever true. There's lots of things that are going to change. There's lots of things that are going to come or going to go. But the word of God, the scripture, it is always going to remain. It doesn't change with culture. It doesn't change with the times. It doesn't get watered down. It is what it is, what it is. And we base our life on what does God's word say? Not does what the current of culture say, not what just seems right in the moment. We build our life on God's word, and anything that God ever tells you is 100% going to line up with God's word. Here's the second filter. Number one, does it line up with God's word? And number two, this is really important. Will this thing that I'm feeling, sensing, hearing, is it going to make me more like Christ? Because that is the goal, ultimately, of the Christian life. The Christian life begins in the moment of salvation. And salvation, I'm so grateful, there's no strings attached that I can just come with all of my mess, with all of my habits, with all of my hang-ups, with all the bad decisions, with all of my sin, and I can come to Jesus and he accepts me just as I am. The same is true 
for you. You don't have to do anything to earn the love and the grace and the mercy and the forgiveness of Jesus. It is available to you. It is a free gift from God. That is salvation, and that happens in a moment. But then there happens to be this process that goes along the course of our lifetime, and theologians call it regeneration. And regeneration just means that day by day by day, I become more and more like Jesus. The way that I think is more like Jesus. The way that I act is more like Jesus. The way that I deal with my anger is more like Jesus. And let's be honest, we don't always get it perfect. Come on, somebody. Some days we do good. Some days we're not so great. Some days we take one step forward and two steps back. But God has always inviting us, hey, be more like me. Come and be more like my son, Jesus. Paul said it this way. In your lives, here's what I want you to do. You must think and act like Christ Jesus. And so when you feel this leading, when you have this sense, here's just the filter. If I do this, are people going to see Jesus in me? If I say this, are people going to see Jesus in me? If I go to this place, is the light of Jesus that's in me going to shine brighter or is it going to get darker? And James, the brother of Jesus, because sometimes we're not sure, sometimes we don't know, like, like I almost need a filter for this filter. James, the brother of Jesus, made it so wonderfully clear for us. He says, the wisdom that comes from heaven, and that's what we want. That's what we're talking about this whole series. I don't want my own wisdom for my life. My wisdom will get me to a certain place, but it's not going to get me to the best place that God wants. What I want for you, the reason we're talking about this for several weeks, is I want you to be able to tune in to the frequency of the wisdom of heaven. And James says that wisdom of heaven, well, first of all, it's pure. Like, first of all, anything that God leads me to is going to be pure. And so if I go to this place, if I accept this invitation, will it be pure? There's a good filter. There's a good yes or no. Well, what about peace-loving? If I send this email, is it going to promote peace or is it going to promote strife? If I type out this Facebook comment, is it going to promote peace? Is it going to promote strife? Is it going to bring peace into my family if I say this? Is it going to bring strife? There's a good question. They can keep us from future problems. What about considerate? What about submissive, full of mercy, good fruit? Is it impartial? Is it sincere? And these are just things that we can kind of check ourselves against. Is this going to make me more like Christ? Is the light of Christ going to shine brighter in me if I go here, do this, say this, respond this way, parent this way, deal with my anger this way? What makes me more like Christ? Because anything that makes us less like Christ, anything that makes the light of Christ in our life more dull is not from God. So does it line up with the Bible? And then, is it going to make me more like Christ? There's the first two. Here's the third one. Does godly counsel agree? Now, this is an important word. This is the reason I highlighted this word. Does godly counsel agree? Because here's what's true in all of our lives. We can always find somebody to agree with us. And we're, you know, naturally we gravitate towards people like that. We naturally gravitate to people that think like us and agree with us. And if we really want to do something, we can find people that agree. If I want to cheat on my wife, I can find somebody that gives me the thumbs up and says, yeah, Kyle, that's a great idea. I think you ought to just go for it. If I want to do it bad enough, I can get around the people that cheer me on. And so we need to have godly counsel. We need to have people that are willing to come alongside of us and say, you know what, I'm not so sure about that. I don't know if that is really the right choice. I don't think that that's really a great idea. Instead of trying to force our way into it and trying to, you know, fit a, a square peg into a round hole, we say, what does godly counsel say? There was a guy that really wanted, I mean, he just really wanted a Krispy Kreme donut. And he was driving down the road and he just began to pray, Heavenly Father, you know that I want a Krispy Kreme donut so bad. And so I'm just praying, if it is thy will for me to have a Krispy Kreme donut, may the hot neon donut light be on when I drive by. And he would just pray along. He just really wanted this hot Krispy Kreme donut. And he drove by and then he looked, the light was off. 
And he was so disappointed, but he thought, wait a minute, I bet if I drive around the block, the light will be back on. And that's exactly what he did. He drove around the block, and the light was on. We can, we can force our way into things if we really want it, but we need godly counsel to say, I would go a different way. I would pause. I would stop. Proverbs has so many things to say about this. Let me give you two verses from Proverbs. The way of fools seems right to them. Like, oh, that feels right. Their relationship seems good. This purchase seems right. But the wise, they listen to advice. Now, how many in the chat room are, are like me that I've oftentimes found myself on both sides of the comma? I've been oftentimes, boy, that seems right. Boy, that purchase would be fun. I ought to try that, and I just rush into something. I just do it. I said it last week that I had the tendency to be a shoot first and aim later type of person. And more often than not, when I do that, it comes back to bite me. I have some regret. I wish I could do a do-over. But other times I've been on the other side of the comma where I've been willing to pause, where I've been willing to get aside Brandy, and I'd say, I, I need some advice. And Brandy, for me, is often that person that she sees things in a different way. She has a different perspective. And so I'll say, hey, I've got this idea. I was thinking about this. What do you think? And she'll say, well, have you thought about that? Well, what about when this happens? And what are we going to do about this? And they, she, she brings up things that I think I would have never thought about it. And here's what it's done. It's kept me from harm. It's kept me from future regret by just asking what do you think? Godly counsel. You need some of those people in your life. Here's what else Proverbs says. Surely you need guidance. Like don't try to do life on your own, in other words. You need guidance to wage war, and victory is won through many advisors. Craig Groeschel, the pastor of Life Church, he said it this way. If you want to make better decisions, go ahead and hang around better people. If you want God's direction, hang around with God's people. When I was a youth pastor all those years ago, I would tell my teenagers, it's true for teenagers, it's true for adults, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Show me the people you hang out with and I'm going to show you what kind of decisions you're going to make. Listen, I'm not mad at broke people, but I don't want to get financial advice from broke people. I want to get financial advice from people that have good investments, that have been wise financially. I don't want to get health and wellness advice from people that are not healthy and that are not in shape. I'm not mad at those people. They probably have a lot of gifts and a lot of things I could learn from them. But I want to get health and wellness advice from people that are strong, that are fit, that know how to keep care of their body. I want to get spiritual, godly advice from godly people. I want to hang out with godly people because I want to be where they're at. I want to hang around with people that are awesome parents. I want to hang around people that have awesome marriages. I want to hang around people that have awesome relationships with God because they're already at where I want to go. And so I need godly advice. And my, I don't have it all figured out. You ought to be smart enough to know that you don't know. Come on, somebody. Be smart enough to know that you don't know. And so get around some good people. Does it line up with the Bible? What about the godly people in your life? What do they have to say about it? Is it going to make me more or less like Christ? And then here's our fourth filter, just trying to give you some filters. Do I have peace? Do I have that? I, I, I think that this is where God is leading me to, and it brings me peace when I think about it. Here's what peace isn't. Peace isn't an absolute certainty of exactly how everything's going to go that I just know steps one through 10 and I can just see it and the whole puzzle is put together perfectly. That's not peace. Peace is, yeah, there is some uncertainty and I don't know exactly how it's gonna work out, but I just have the sense that yes, this is what God is calling me to. Here's the great news for all of us, that if you are a Christian, if you're following Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. It's not special to me, you have the Holy Spirit, and one of the ways the Holy Spirit speaks to you is through peace. Some of you might have had this experience. You were getting ready to sign on the dotted line. You were getting ready to say yes. You were getting ready to take that second date or that third date, and you were getting ready to move in that direction, and you just felt this, eh, I don't think so. Do you know what might have happened? You might have heard the voice of God through a lack of peace. I love what Paul said. This ought to be some of your life verses. God is not the author of confusion, 
but of peace. Now, so often in our lives, we live in this web of confusion and chaos and uncertainty. That is not from God. God always brings peace in his leading. And there might still be some, I don't know how all this is going to work out. And there might be some uncertainty. But in the end, I still have peace as I walk into the certainty because I know that God is with me. We've been reading Philippians a lot during these last several weeks. But Philippians says it this way. We'll see it again. A great verse. Don't be anxious about whether to take the new job or whether to make that investment or whether to have another kid or whether to go out on that date or whether to start that business. Don't be anxious about all those things. But in every situation, should I sign my kids up? Should we go to this school? Should we homeschool or public school? What, how should we live our life? In every situation, big and small, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, God, you've been so good. You've led me before. I thank you that you're going to lead me now present your request to God. God, I don't know. I know enough to know that I don't know. And then this is the promise, the peace of God. That's what we're after, right? We're after the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. What's it going to do? It's going to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, just trying to help you, trying to help you decide is what I'm hearing and what I'm sensing. Is it from God? Is it just what I'm feeling in the moment? Is it just emotional? Is it my spiritual enemy? Here's some filters. Does it line up with the Bible? Will it make me more like Christ? Does godly counsel agree? And do I have peace? And then when you put all of those leadings through those filters, here's what you do. Decide. Decide. You see, there's this myth that there's only one right way and all the rest are wrong. And I just don't think that that is true. If you've gotten godly counsel, if you have some peace if it's going to make you more like Christ, if it doesn't go against the Bible, there might be a couple, three things that are just totally fine for you to do. And you are given the ability, you're given the freedom to decide. God doesn't want you to be this robot. God doesn't want you just to be plodded along. He gives you the wisdom to decide. Mr. Miyagi, the great theologian from Karate Kid, he said it this way. We've said this before. Daniel, son, must talk. Walk right side, safe. Walk left side, safe. Walk middle, get squish. Just like grapes. And I mean, how true is that? At some point, you've just got to decide, am I going to go this way or am I going to go that way? I've talked to godly counsel. I have peace. I've, I, I've decided, man, uh, it's going to make me more like Christ. Either way, it doesn't go against my. You are given the freedom to decide. The apostle Paul, he just decided at one point when we could stand it no longer, we thought it best. We didn't see a burning bush. There wasn't this audible voice of God. There wasn't angels. There wasn't a handwriting on the wall. We just thought it best. We, we thought it best. We'll just be left by ourselves in Athens. I love what Psalms says. This is such an extraordinary verse. Some of y'all to put this on your fridge. The Lord says, go ahead and put your name right there. The Lord says to you, sir, the Lord says to you, on tablets, on TV screens, on computers, you're trying to make the decision, you're trying to go A and B, the Lord says to you today, I'm going to guide you along the best pathway for your life. There's a lot of pathways you could take. God wants to take you on the best one. God wants to take you to the absolute best for your life, and he will guide you. You know what a guide does? A guide doesn't just get to the end and shout, hey, when you get here, it'll all be okay. A guide takes you by the hand, Step by step by step. Hey, watch out for that. Hey, watch out for that ditch. Watch out for that rock. Hey, step over that root. Go this way because over here there's the marsh and there's mud and you're going to get slowed down. He just guides you along the best pathway for your life. What's he going to do? He's going to advise you. Hey, I'd go this way. He's going to watch over you. That's what your heavenly father wants. For you. And here's what's going to happen. Sometimes we're going to get it right. Sometimes we're going to get it wrong. Sometimes we're going to make the right choice. Here, the wrong choice. Sometimes we're going to make the right choice. Here's great news. We have a God that is able to redeem it all. If you have lived 50 years of your life going the wrong way, taking the wrong path, making wrong decision after wrong decision after wrong decision, it's not too late for you. You can still get to the best for your life. God is a redeemer and whether you screwed up royally this last week and you're facing the problem and whether you screwed up royally when you were a teenager and it's affected you now as you're as you're an adult god can redeem it's not too late for you 
to get on the best pathway for your life. You do it by listening to the voice of God. So let me give you three tips really quickly as we finish up this series. We're turning about, we're talking about how do I tune in to the voice of God? Three tips really, really quickly. The first one is this. If you want to hear the voice of God, tune into God every day. Listen, don't just tune into God at church on Sundays. You won't, you won't get that relationship that God wants. If I only connected with my wife one day a week for one hour, that's not going to be a very good relationship. I connect, I speak, I listen to Brandy every day. We've been calling the series Frequency. Here's what I want you to do. Tune in to the frequency frequently. Tune in to that frequency just like you dial that radio station. Tune into that frequency frequently. Listen, the goal of spending time with God is to help you to tune into God. The goal of reading the Bible is not to just read the Bible. The goal of prayer is not just so that you check it off of your spiritual to-do list. The goal of all of those things is to help you to hear and to know the voice of God. When Brandy calls me, I know her voice. Why do I know her voice? Because of caller ID, number one, let's be honest. But I also know her voice because I've heard her voice a lot. Now, if you don't talk to Brandy very often, she might pick up the phone and say hello, and you, you might not recognize that voice because you haven't spoke and listened to that voice very much. I speak and listen to the voice of Brandy every day, and I know her voice. She can say, hey, Kyle, and I say, hey, girl, what's going on? I recognize her voice. And here's what's true for all of, all of us. My ears are not better than your ears. I do not have any kind of special connection to God that you don't have. Just because I am a full-time preacher, just because I put on a microphone and I open up scripture and I stand on a stage and you listen, my connection and my line to God is not special. It's not any different. It's not any more powerful than yours. God wants to speak to you. You can hear the voice of God, and God wants that for you. You just have to tune into it every day. So I'm tuning into something. I'm leaning towards something. But then there's also the other side of the coin. i got to tune out some things that oppose God. Now listen, we live in a culture. Come on, somebody. We all know this. There are things in our world that go against God. There's things that oppose God, and we've been invited to tune those things out, there's lots of voices. There's lots of things trying to get your attention. But some of those things are going to clog up your ears. Some of those things are going to pollute your heart. And we said in week number one that a polluted heart makes it difficult to hear the voice of God. Let me just tell you my story. A couple weeks ago, maybe a month, I can't remember for sure, I was enjoying my TV show. I just had a show that I was really enjoying. It had some adventure. It had some intrigue. It had some suspense. And I was just really enjoying it. And then all of a sudden, seemingly overnight, the show just kind of took a turn. And the language started to change. And it was F-bomb this and F-bomb that. And there were some themes that I knew kind of opposed God and some things that started to happen that I knew weren't God's best. And I just heard that gentle kind of leading, nudging, in my life, Kyle, that's not good for you. Kyle, letting that stuff into your life, that's going to pollute your heart. And so, being the holy, pastor, God-loving, Jesus-following person that I am, I decided to go ahead and play the next episode. Come on, somebody. I'm just trying to be real up in here. I just shoved that voice off to the side. I said, I can handle it. I've got this. It's no big deal. I just shoved that voice of God to the side and did what I wanted to do. And I got about two more episodes in. Thanks, Netflix. You can just keep watching. And I got that voice again. I wouldn't watch that if I were you. It's polluting, and you're going to have to decide, would you rather be entertained for a little while or whether would you rather hear the voice of God? What seems right to me in the moment was actually going to lead me away from God. And so I just had to decide, okay, I'll just turn that off. I'll just choose to lean away from some things that oppose God. Listen, I don't think it's my job to tell you what's right and what's wrong. That's what the Holy Spirit's for. The Holy Spirit lives in you, and he will give you those warning lights just like he gave me. Kyle, that's not right. Kyle, you shouldn't be doing that. Kyle, you shouldn't be letting that in to your life. And I kind of was kidding myself. And I said, oh, that stuff doesn't bother me. 
oh, that language, that doesn't bother me. I can handle it. But here, well, here, here's the problem. I'm just telling a story about me. It should have bothered me. I should have a sharp conscience. I should be so sensitive to things that oppose God. And I had been willing to dull my conscience and to drown out the voice of God because I wanted to be short-term entertained. I want you to lean away from some things that oppose God. I want you to lean in. I want you to tune in to the frequency frequently. But that might mean that you have to tune out of some things that oppose God. And here's the last one, just trying to help us today. Take steps towards what God has spoken. Listen, here, here's what's true for, for some listening today. You already know that God's been speaking to you. You don't need me to tell you what God is saying. You know that God is saying, that's not the right thing. You ought to do this. You ought to slow down. You ought to move in this direction. You ought not be in that type of relationship. You already know that God is speaking to you. And here, can I just encourage you today, if you've been hesitating, if you've been thinking I, that move, moving in that direction is going to cause me some, some pain, can I just encourage you today? Listen, your Heavenly Father is not mad at you. Your Heavenly Father wants to guide you along the best pathway for your life. And so everything God leads you to, it's for your good. And everything that God leads you away from, every person, come on somebody, that God leads you away from is for your good. I want you to tune in to that voice of God. Can I pray for you today? Maybe you're listening to us today and you just need that voice of God. You need some direction. You need some wisdom. You need some understanding. Can I just pray for you today? Just in that type, uh, chat room, just type me, M-E, just me. Let us know that we're praying for you. I would love to pray that God's voice would be loud in your life. Can I pray for you today? Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for your voice. We're grateful for the Holy Spirit that leads and guides and directs. And for those that today, we, they just need some direction. They need to know what the best pathway for their life is. Lord, I'm praying that the voice of God would speak so, so clearly. Lord, would you show us the things that maybe we've allowed into our life that are polluting our hearts? Would you show us things that we've allowed in our life that oppose you? And we would be willing to put aside those things so that we can tune in to you. Lord, I'm praying that you would lead us along the best pathway for our life. Lord, I'm praying for those that have maybe made some bad decisions this last week, this last month, maybe this last year. Lord, I'm praying that you would redeem the time. Lord, I'm praying that you would redeem what the devil has tried to break, what the devil has tried to steal, and that you would guide us into your best possible future for our life. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Hey, next week, we're going to start this brand new series called The Book of Prayers. This last series, we've been talking about how do I listen to God. And so this next series, we're going to talk about, well, how do I speak to God? If you're anything like me, prayer can be a little bit intimidating. Not sure what to say. What do I, what do, I do? What am I supposed to, to say? How does this all work? We're going to talk about prayer. And I promise, I promise, I promise, if you've ever struggled with prayer, you need to be here for this series. You can be here in person. You can be here online. It's going to be really, really wonderful. Hey, if you love your church, if this church has added value to your life, whether you're here in the immediate area, maybe you're watching from out of state, but if the church adds value to your life, we would love to ask you to continue and to maybe for the first time support the church that adds value to you, that we've done it digitally. You can do it really easily right from where you're sitting, from your phone or from your computer, from your tablet. You can, number one, you can go to Gateway Oakley dot com slash give it's a website you can fill out your details and you can give and support your church from there you can also text to give you can just type 785-302-9118 and then just put in how much you want to give and we will be so grateful and thankful for you supporting your church i've already talked about it but here's what i want to leave you with today come back sunday come back sunday come back sunday is next week i'm done preaching to an empty room i want you here in the building i know some of you are from out of state out of the area you can't possibly make it we want you to keep tuning in at 10 30 but if you can be here in the building next week we want you here in the building but just remember that in the building services start at 10 15 
in the building services start at 10 15 online services start at 10 30 and so come on come on come on come into the building we cannot wait to see you it's going to be a wonderful celebration as we launch in to this brand new series until we can see you again may the lord bless you may he keep you may he lift up his face upon you and give you peace in jesus name amen have a great rest of the day can't wait to see you soon